Wow, that was so nice of you. Are you excited for Resurrection Sunday coming up in a few days? Resurrection Sunday? What's that? Oh, you know, Easter. Oh, oh yes. I hope the Easter Bunny brings us lots of eggs this year. Hmm. Yeah, and we'll get lots of chocolate. Is there anything else you're excited about? No, I think that's it. Yeah, and that's what Easter is all about, right? My goodness, children, do you mean to tell me that you don't know what Easter is all about? And don't say chocolate and bunnies. Eggs? Mm. Now, you're going to sit right here, both of you, and I am going to tell you what Easter is all about. Now, do you remember? How I told you about Jesus coming as a baby, God sending him to earth? Oh yes, that's what Christmas is about. That's right. Well, see, Jesus didn't stay a baby. He didn't. He didn't stay a baby at all, no. He grew up. He grew up and he got very popular because God was moving through him and working through him. And for three years, he went about teaching and preaching the people about God, how to live and how to love, and he did amazing miracles. Like what? Well, he, let's see, he healed blind men, yes. He made the lame to walk, he cast out evil spirits, healed diseases, he did amazing things, many. Wow. Wow. Yes, it was wonderful. But you see, Jesus wasn't always popular because people liked him. In fact, there were some people who didn't like him at all. And these guys are often referred to as the Pharisees. But I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for them that persecute you. Why didn't they like him? Well, because Jesus told them the truth. He told them when they were doing things wrong and disobeying God. He didn't do it to make them feel bad. Jesus never does things to make us feel bad. He did it so that they would change. But you see, these people were very proud and they didn't want to believe Jesus. They said he was a fake. They said that he wasn't the Son of God. They thought they knew what the Son of God was supposed to be like and what he was. But their pride blinded them from seeing that it was Jesus who is the Son of God. These men hated Jesus so much, they wanted to get rid of him forever. Well, they wanted to kill him. What? All because they didn't believe him? Jesus was changing all the ways they were doing things, and people were following him. They thought it would be the right thing to get rid of Jesus, but it wasn't the right thing at all. Pride is a terrible thing. We all have to be very careful of children. Grandma, what's pride? Well, I'll get to that in just a second. I think Jesus has something to say. But I say unto you, that when you pray, be not as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the chief place of the corners, so that they might be seen of men. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret, he shall reward you openly. Grandma, what's pride? And yet again, I will get to that, but I think Pastor Tom has something to say. Yes, and every time Jesus would teach the people, they would be astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as someone who had authority and not like the religious leaders. And Jesus went around all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and they were scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
No. Grandma, what's pride? Well, pride is when we think that our way is best and that it's better than everyone else's. And if we give in to pride, we can even start to think that our way is better than God's way, and there's no way better than God's way. So, um, what happened? Well, about a week before what we know as Easter, Jesus made a great entry into the city. The people were shouting that he was the king of Israel. <laughs> Now, I bet you're thinking, those guys didn't like that, right? Yeah. Uh-oh, I bet those guys didn't like that. What are they called again? The Pharisees. And you're right. It was the last straw for them. In their minds, Jesus was a horrible person who needed more than anything to die. So they plotted and got one of Jesus' own disciples to betray him. Oh, no. What happened? Well, we'll hear in just a second. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sang a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Hmm. Now it happened like this. This is what happened. A few days after the great entry, Jesus celebrated a feast with his disciples. Mmm, a feast. Mm-hmm. Yes, and after that, Jesus and his disciples, well, what do you think they did? They went to a garden called Gethsemane, and Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. This is very close to the time of his death. Now, he went and he prayed for a long time. And the disciples, they were supposed to be praying too, but um, they fell asleep. <laughs> That's um, just like you. Hey! <laughs> yes. Just like you. <laughs> Just like you. And he was praying for a long time. So there coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives. And as he was accustomed, him and his disciples went to the Mount. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and he prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will to take this cup away from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter temptation. Well, anyways, when Jesus came to where the disciples were waiting for him, he woke up and said to them, Arise, behold my betrayer. Right then, Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, showed up with a group of soldiers and armed men. And there, Judas did the unthinkable. He turned Jesus over to the Pharisees. But why? The Pharisees had made a deal with Judas. They gave him money to betray Jesus. Now I know you're probably thinking that why wasn't Jesus his friend, and, and yes, he was his friend. Yeah, wasn't he his but friend? But wasn't Jesus his friend? That's right, that's what I said, yes. Well, sometimes we betray Well, we don't think about the consequences. 
we get so caught up in what we want and we do these foolish things and we do it all the time in different ways we're very selfish but Jesus knew this and he still loved Judas even after what he did and when all was said and done Judas was sorry for what he did but it was too late now to take it back why didn't Jesus just use his power to escape well, because Jesus knew it all had to happen to him. He went willingly with his captors because Jesus knew it needed to happen. Jesus was taken before the leaders and eventually they sentenced him to be crucified. But he didn't do anything wrong. Yes, that's what the leaders thought too. But you see, the people twisted Jesus' words and they demanded he be put to death. And so the leaders gave the people what they wanted. They beat him, they whipped him, they mocked him, and put a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus was so weak that he couldn't even carry the cross he was to be fight on. So they forced a man named Simon to carry it for him. It was a terrible sight, children. And when they got to the place called Golgotha, they crucified him. And for three hours, it became dark all across the land. Grandma, what's crucified? Again, I will get to that. the pond, the whole area, the whole countryside until about three o'clock in the afternoon. And the sun was turned black as in an eclipse. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, was your question? Grandma, what's crucified? Ah, yes. So crucified means to put someone to death by nailing them to the cross. It was a terrible way to die. And usually criminals were put to death that way. But Jesus wasn't a criminal? No, he wasn't. But the Pharisees wanted him treated that way. These Pharisee guys, right? These Pharisee guys are mean. They should be the ones crucified. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what we would naturally want. But in all the evil and terrible things that happened, Jesus asked God to forgive the people who harmed him. Why? They didn't deserve forgiveness. They were putting him to death. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They didn't deserve forgiveness. But that's why Jesus came and died, so that us and them could have forgiveness. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus died. He died to take the sin of the world. He died for you. For every little thing you can think of to every terrible thing you could think of, it all held him to the cross. Our sin, mine, and yours. Jesus took. That's why he went willingly, though, because he loves us so much. And greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. He wants us to have forgiveness. He wants us to know him. That's why he died.
<laughs> Wasn't that beautiful? Huh? <laughs> Oh, boy, what a blessing these folks are, huh? I'm kind of scared of these soldiers, though. I don't quite know what they're... I asked him if he was... What'd you say? I asked him if he was a centurion, and he said, Well, I think so. I said, Just say yes. That's the right answer. So. Anyway, we want to thank you guys for coming out. As you saw, the story's not over. Part two, Sunday morning, right? Amen. All right. So I hope that you'll all come out Sunday morning for our resurrection celebration. And uh, the kids are going to be back and they're going to finish the play up for you. And, uh, and the adults too. They all look like little kids, don't they? Anyway, thank you so much for coming. There's coffee. There's some cookies and stuff out in the foyer if you care to hang out for a while. That's awesome. You can do that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pray and excuse us for the evening. So, Father, we want to give you thanks. And, uh, Lord, I, I, oh, Lord, I just sometimes I just don't know how to express your greatness. And I think all of us in here tonight, Lord, as we witness this, this play, it reminds us of the terrible, hard, horrible death that you died for us. And Lord, as we go home tonight, we want to be thankful to you. We want to thank you, Lord, that you were willing to come to this earth and to become a man. To choose to come and die for us, for, for all the people of all time and all the world. We're so blessed to have you. We know tonight that there is no other name under heaven by which we might be saved, but the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you and bless you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Awesome.